Okay, so now let's give our attention to Brother Joseph Black as he shares with us how love and faith conquer the world. When you hear the word conquer, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? You might think of maybe a historical figure from the past, uh, perhaps a king that was known for great military might. Uh, for me personally, Alexander the Great comes to mind. Alexander the Great spent most of his ruling years on an unprecedented military campaign through Western Asia and Northeastern Africa. And by the age of only 30, he had created one of the largest empires of the ancient world, stretching from Greece to Northwestern India, as we see here displayed in the image. While these conquests were unprecedented, Alexander's ruling did not last long. While he became king in 336 BCE, he died prematurely in 323 BCE at the very young age of only 32. Now I turned 36 this July, 32 seems very young to me. No single individual, no heir, no son, no daughter, succeeded Alexander as absolute ruler. After his death, his empire was divided up amongst his four leading generals at that time. Now, despite his vast conquests, we cannot really say that Alexander the Great conquered the whole world as the title of our talk today advocates. Well, is there perhaps a historical figure that has an example that we could look to to follow? Well, please turn with me in your Bibles to the first of, of many scriptures that we're going to examine today. Uh, we'll be reading from the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, but feel free to follow along in, in your preferred translation of the Bible. The first verse that we're gonna look at is John chapter 16, verse 33. That's John 16, 33. And that verse reads, I have said these things to you, so that by means of me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take courage, I have conquered the world. So here we learn from Christ Jesus himself that he has conquered the world. He's the example to follow. He did so without military might. No, the weapons that he used were love and faith. Well, whom did Jesus have to battle with while conquering the world? Wouldn't it be the ruler of the world? Well, as the familiar verse at 1 John 5, 19, uh, that we're very familiar with, that verse states, we know we originate with God, but the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. And we know that wicked one to be Satan the devil. Jesus had to resist the ruler of the world, Satan the devil, on multiple occasions. Let's look at one account where Jesus had to resist Satan's temptations uh, to deny his father's godship. Uh, this account is found at Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 8 through 10. It's Matthew 4, 8 through 10, and the next several verses that we're going to examine are in the book of Matthew, so feel free to, to leave your Bibles or your tablets marked there. Matthew 4, 8 through 10. Again, the devil took him along to an unusually high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and do an act of worship to me. Then Jesus said to him, go away, Satan, for it is written, it is Jehovah your God you must worship, and it is to him alone you must render sacred service. We see here in this image how unshakable Jesus' faith is and his love for Jehovah. He's not even looking at the kingdoms of the world that Satan used to tempt him. He's focused on maintaining his integrity and accomplishing the work he was given to do. Clearly, Jesus is the model for us to follow his steps closely. Let's go back to our example at the beginning. When Alexander the Great set out on this vast military conquest, do you think he and his soldiers got together and they, they just looked at each other and said, okay, let's go conquer the world? 
Well, no, of course not. They prepared immensely. Uh, they physically trained. They stocked the needed supplies. They made sure their weapons were sharp and ready. Their gear was in tip-top shape because they knew the challenge that laid ahead of them was very daunting. Well, similarly in his day, Jesus made sure that his disciples were very well prepared for their world conquest. He instructed them on what type of persecution they could expect, since they were, as he was, and as we, as Jehovah's Witnesses are today, no part of the world. Let's take a look at one of his warnings to his disciples. This is found, again, in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, and verses 16 through 18. It's Matthew 10, 16 through 18. Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So prove yourselves cautious as serpents and yet innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men, for they will hand you over to local courts and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And let's pay close attention here to verse 18 because we're going to reference this verse later. And you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a witness to them and the nations. Not only did Jesus warn his disciples, but he also gave them very clear instruction on how to protect themselves from the ruler of the world, Satan the devil. Jesus' disciples, as well as we today, are very privileged. We have the most powerful being in the whole universe is our protector, Jehovah God. You might recall, as we learned at our 2018 Be Courageous Regional Convention, Jehovah plus one is always the majority. And we always have an open line of communication to him. Uh, this is referenced in the Lord's Prayer. Many people are, are familiar with this prayer. Many people even say this prayer today. Let's take a look at these well-known verses. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 9, and then verse 13. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Here Jesus says, You must pray then this way. Our Father in the heavens, let your name be sanctified. And then drop down to verse 13. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the wicked one. And then there, if we utilize our reference Bible, we see that we can substitute rescue for deliver. So the latter part of that verse could be read, and do not bring us into temptation, but rescue us from the wicked one. We see here that if we pray to Jehovah to protect us, he will rescue us uh, from Satan's temptations, just as he did for his son. However, for this protection to be in place, we need to have a good relationship with Jehovah already established. Have you ever had a friend that every time the phone rings, you, you look at it, you see their name displayed, and, and you say to yourself, I wonder what they need help with now. And I really hope that none of you are saying to yourself, yes, Joseph, I have, and that friend is you. Please be, be patient with me. I, I'll try to be a better friend. We definitely don't want to have that type of relationship with Jehovah. How can we strengthen our love and, and therefore our friendship with Jehovah? And this is the first of several main points that we really want to emphasize today. The more we learn about Jehovah, the more we will love him, and therefore the stronger our faith in his promises will become. Once again, Jesus set the example for us to follow. He strengthened the faith and love of his disciples by helping them to come to know Jehovah better. We're going to reference a couple verses here in John. Uh, we're not going to uh, look them up, but we'll just quote them. John chapter 17, verse 3, another familiar verse, states, This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God. Uh, verse 26 of the same chapter, John chapter 17, 26, says, I have made your name known to them and will make it known, so that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in union with them. If we follow these steps and adhere to them closely, we can be confident that we too, as the Apostle Paul put it, can be completely victorious. 
even when sufferings and injustices that we may face currently in this wicked system of things seem almost unbearable. We can cultivate the confidence that the Apostle Paul had in Jesus and Jehovah. Let's read Paul's uh, very motivating words found at Romans chapter 8. That's uh, Romans chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 37 through 39. This is one of my favorite scriptures personally, and it's, it's almost hard to read and not have the, the hair on your arm stand up. On the contrary, in all these things, we are coming off completely victorious through the one who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor governments, nor things now here, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation will be able to separate us from God's love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What an extremely comforting and faith-strengthening thought that really is. Absolutely nothing can separate us from Jesus and Jehovah's love. Thus far, we've established that Christ Jesus conquered the world and he left us the model to follow. We've also established that he prepared his disciples and therefore us as well for our world conquest. But you might be saying to yourself, well, that's great that the people that physically walked the earth with Jesus were strengthened by him. But what about in the modern day that we're living in right now? Jehovah's servants have gained victory uh, over the world in several different ways today. One of the biggest challenges that we face today is maintaining our Christian neutrality. Uh, this is because as we move deeper and deeper into the last days, political tensions are worsening. Uh, people are, are very tense, they're angry, sometimes they're even confrontational. While we enjoy a relative freedom, a relative fragile freedom in this country, that's not the case for our brothers in other parts of the world. One of the many outstanding modern day examples that we have is our brother Dennis Christensen from Russia. If you recall the verse earlier that we read in Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, verse 18, that verse reads, And you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a witness to them and the nations. Brother Christensen is definitely serving as a witness to the nations right now. He has endured approximately four years of unjust imprisonment in Russia. When he was asked how this tribulation has affected his faith, his answer always remains the same. He says, my faith has become only stronger. Brother Christensen relates, I have experienced what is written in the Bible book of James, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you meet with various trials, knowing as you do that this tested quality of your faith produces endurance. And can't we see the joy on our brother's face in this image? If you didn't know any better, I don't think I could convince you that this man was being persecuted based on his expression. Brother Christensen humbly admits, Irina and I are far from perfect, but we have learned to endure and to stay joyful under trial. And what is most important is that we have drawn even closer to our God and Father, Jehovah. What an outstanding modern day example for us to follow, brothers and sisters. Another way that Jehovah's people have gained victory over the world is by avoiding selfish and valueless pursuits. This is not a popular strategy at all in the world today. Satan's system of things tries to constantly tell you that you need more. It's truly never enough. We're constantly bombarded with that message today, are we not? The Apostle Paul, once again, had great words to live by that we, we do well to remind ourselves of. Uh, these are found at 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 6 through 12. It's 1 Timothy 6, 
6 through 12. To be sure, there is great gain in godly devotion, along with contentment. For we have brought nothing into the world, and neither can we carry anything out. So having food and clothing, we will be content with these things. Now let's see what the result is if we attempt to live the opposite way. But those who are determined to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many senseless and harmful desires that plunge men into destruction and ruin. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of injurious things. And by reaching out for this love, some have been led astray from the faith and have stabbed themselves all over with many pains. However, you, O man of God, flee from these things, but pursue righteousness, godly devotion, faith, love, endurance, and mildness. Fight the fine fight of the faith. Get a firm hold on the everlasting life for which you were called and you offered the fine public declaration in front of many witnesses. That's exactly what we want, isn't it? A happy, content life in this system of things, and then a firm hold on the promise of everlasting life in the future. I found this quote regarding contentment that I thought put it very nicely. It reads, Realize that true happiness lies within you. Waste no time and effort searching for peace and contentment and joy in the world outside. Remember that there is no happiness in having or in getting, but only in giving. Reach out, share, smile, hug. Happiness is a perfume you cannot pour on others without getting a few drops on yourself. We can focus our attention not on valueless pursuits, but on the triumph of our exemplar, Jesus Christ, and on other faithful witnesses, and this can help us to endure. Uh, once again, Paul spoke of this as well at Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read the first three verses of that chapter, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. So, then, because we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also throw off every weight in the sin that easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, as we look intently at the chief agent and perfecter of our faith, Jesus. For the joy that was set before him, he endured a torture stake, despising shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Indeed, consider closely the one who has endured such hostile speech from sinners against their own interests, so that you may not get tired and give up. And that's exactly what we want to be like, a runner in a race that is clearly focused on what lies ahead. Now you might be asking, okay, I understand that it is possible in the modern day to conquer the world by following Jesus' example. But how do love and faith enable us to do so? Well, as we previously established when we referenced 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, this ungodly world is still lying in the power of the wicked one, Satan. Just as you might say Alexander the Great's army that he commanded portrayed his qualities, maybe determination, uh, being a, a military tactician, um, the world that we're living in today reflects the devil's spirit. What do we see when we look at the world today? We see genocide, lying, jealousy, immorality, hatred, and violence on an extraordinary scale. I want everyone to leave this meeting and this talk feeling refreshed and positive, so I don't want to get into all of the specific events or data points that have occurred but how many racially motivated violent events or shootings or simply random shootings can you recall that have happened recently? They're so frequent that we almost become immune to hearing about them when we see them in the news. How can we make sure that the spirit of the world does not take root in our minds and then therefore in our hearts? 
we must take full advantage of Jehovah's spiritual provisions. We can view these provisions as our training for battle, so to speak. Additionally, we must pray to Jehovah constantly for his Holy Spirit. 1 John 4, 4 says, You originate with God, little children, and you have conquered them, because the one who is in union with you is greater than the one who is in union with the world. Yes, we know Jehovah is far greater than the devil or the wicked world currently under satanic control. Now, this leads us into our second main point that we really want to emphasize, and that is abounding love and unwavering faith will equip us to conquer the world just as Jesus did. Let's take a look at 1 John chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 3 through 5 and then verses 18. And uh, what these verses are going to show is really how powerful of weapons love and faith can be. That's 1 John 5, 3 through 5. For this is what the love of God means, that we observe his commandments, and yet his commandments are not burdensome, because everyone who has been born from God conquers the world. And this is the conquest that has conquered the world, our faith. Who can conquer the world? Is it not the one who has faith that Jesus is the Son of God? And then let's go ahead and drop down to verse 18. We know that everyone who has been born from God does not practice sin, but the one born from God watches him, and the wicked one cannot take hold of him. What a position of strength that we could find ourselves in, where the wicked one, Satan, cannot take hold of us. Another benefit of being obedient to God as world conquerors is really that we enjoy a much better life now. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 tells us to cleanse ourselves of every defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now we know this fear to not be a fear in the sense that we're afraid of Jehovah. No, we have godly fear because we love and respect Jehovah so much that we fear displeasing him, similar to the way that a young child fears displeasing their parents. This is why we avoid becoming enslaved to, or we cleanse ourselves from things like tobacco, drugs, and pornography, inappropriate dress, as we previously highlighted, it is vital that we take full advantage of all of the spiritual provisions that Jehovah has to offer. We're going to look at, at a familiar couple verses in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 24 and 25. And here these verses highlight really one of the most important provisions that, that we can take advantage of. That's Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And let us consider one another, so as to incite to love and fine works, not forsaking our meeting together, as some have the custom, but encouraging one another, and all the more so, as you see the day drawing near. Our meetings are much more than a simple gathering. They are a chance for us to encourage one another and to stand firm in our faith. And when we follow Jesus' example and instruction to preach about God's kingdom and make disciples, well, this brings true happiness as well, which can really help liberate us from Satan's self-centered world. So in review for uh, the conclusion of our talk today, we've established several key points that we want to take away. The first is that Christ Jesus conquered the world. He left us the model to follow. The Bible says to follow his steps closely. Uh, Jesus prepared us for our world conquest. He let us know uh, what to expect, also how to protect ourselves. And then we have many wonderful modern day examples to follow as well. Uh, we cited Brother Christensen, but there's many others. We have many, many local examples to follow. We've also shown how 
love and faith really work to complement each other as our tools or weapons for battle to be world conquerors. But now you might be asking, what is our reward for being completely victorious as world conquerors? Well, the short answer is that we, as Christian conquerors, will inherit eternal blessings. What was Jesus' reward for conquering the world? Well, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22 states, He is at God's right hand, for he went to heaven, and angels and authorities and powers were made subject to him. What an awesome privilege for Jesus to be awarded such great authority at God's right hand. But Jesus' work is not yet complete. He will, in the very near future, complete his conquest and gain victory at the Battle of Armageddon, spoken about in the book of Revelation. Revelation states, And he went out conquering and to complete his conquest. Now, through our study of the scriptures, we know that it is at this time that the heavenly, those that have the heavenly hope, the faithful anointed ones, will inherit the heavenly kingdom. What an incredible sense of accomplishment that will be for those ones at that time. Uh, for those of us that have the earthly hope, uh, which is the great crowd, also referenced in the book of Revelation, we will inherit the earthly realm of Jehovah's wonderful kingdom. Just imagine how indescribable that paradise will be, uh, what, what that reward's going to be like. What well, We see uh, a depiction here displayed Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 25 and verse 34 so we can see what it's going to be like when we receive that reward. That's Matthew 25, 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who have been blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the founding of the world. Picture yourself in that paradise, surrounded by our brothers and sisters, family, friends, uh, definitely loved ones that we've lost in death, uh, how, how wonderful it's going to be to welcome them into that paradise. At that time, we won't even think about our current struggles in this system of things. We will be living in perfection, exactly how Jehovah God originally intended for us to live how we were designed to live. Yes, by standing firm as world conquerors and by fearlessly preaching about God's kingdom as this wicked system of things comes to an end, we can help others to receive Jehovah's eternal blessing as well. Let us continue to strive to follow Jesus' example closely as we use love and faith to conquer the world. Okay, Brother Black, you may not have heard all the applause, but you certainly saw some, and there were many, and there were many fine points that you brought up for us today, a good relationship with Jehovah, following Jesus' example, and abounding in faith and love. So there was so much in your talk, and we certainly enjoyed every minute of it. But now this is just the first half of our meeting, or, or meal, and it was delicious, okay? But now there's a second portion Jehovah has prepared for us, and that's our watchtower study. So we would like to give our attention to Brother Bearfield as he takes us into our watchtower study. All right, great job, Joseph. Uh, to get started, we're going to sing song number 12, Great God Jehovah. 